Evolution is a term to define only one organism, and that's the self. The self is the universe, the self is the alpha and omega, God and infinity. And that's the only thing that evolves, because we are all part of the self. Nothing goes through an evolutionary process alone, or without direct benefit to the whole. So when you begin to think that there's this controlling elite, this controlling hand behind the curtains leading the planet to destruction, when you think the end is near, the apocalypse, Armageddon, and when you think we as a species are doomed, it is not they, it is you that brought this about. And for a very good reason. You are evolving. Stop blaming everybody and everything else. Quit panicking about global tyranny and natural disaster and pay attention. Because the world is telling you something. It's telling you exactly what is wrong with you and how to fix it. What became later termed as Lucifer, Satan, or the Devil, was representative of the ego which rivals the Lord, the representative of the self. The true self is the epicenter of a person's entire being. It is the total sum of everything that we are. The false ego, on the other hand, is the idea and concept we create about ourselves in the course of our lives, which typically excludes any qualities we don't wish to accept about ourselves. However, Humanity has been endowed with the freedom to choose either to obey the true self or to give in to the temptation of the vanity and materialism of the false ego. Cancer begins with a group of cells within a community that fail to communicate with the conscious signal of the organism. Those cells begin to grow out of control and spread to other areas of the organism. This very disease is evident in our world today. The cancer upon our earth is the domination of our false ego and are divorced from nature. Collect in nature, all that we perceive with our five senses is a result of two fundamental principles. Everything in existence is made of a relationship between vibration and matter. Vibration is a masculine creative force countered by matter, which is a feminine receptive force. Thus begins the principle of duality. We see this duality in ancient myths and philosophies, Yet only those philosophies and scriptures that were perverted and raped of the original meaning gave the impression that one polarity was good while the other was evil. The original sages, adepts, and shamans taught that both are necessary and one would not exist without the other. And the problem I see with humanity today is we don't truly know ourselves anymore. We have the 9 to 5 job, we have the house, the children, the bills, the television, the hobbies, and the errands that we run every single day, and we eventually begin to believe that this is who we are. You know, but who are we beneath the job title, beneath the status of mother or father, theist or atheist, Republican or Democrat, black or white, man or woman, who are we? Who are we deep down inside? We don't know because every time we hear an answer that we don't want to accept about ourselves, we deny it. We'll pass it off and project it onto somebody else and judge them for it. This is repression. And we see what repression can do to us on an individual level, but what about on a collective level of humanity? What happens when the whole world refuses to see what they truly are on the inside? Carl Jung discovered that there is a collective unconscious connected to all humans meaning that the whole of humanity shares a single mind with one another. This is evident in the world through accounts of shared mythology and symbols, the study of morphic fields, and with the science of kinesiology. This collectivity is a global example of the unconscious mind of the human body in which trillions of cells share a similar signal. This parasite called our false ego requires a continuous flow of sustenance to survive. For this psychic parasite to survive, it must supply us with a chemical that will cause us to remain dependent upon it. In this case, the sustenance is our conscious energy. And in order for us to feed it to the parasite, the chemical of fear causes humanity to crave protection and defense. Humanity is plagued with an incapacity for freedom, meaning that people en masse lack the ability to govern themselves on a psychic level 
and this manifests in the macrocosm as government and organized religious powers, thus opening the throne, our national and individual throne, to anyone and anything. The symptoms of our psycho-spiritual illness are the wars, terrorist attacks, artificial or man-made disasters, and leader figures. As long as the people remain oblivious to their inner drives and inner nature, they will always fail to recognize why these events take place and why these figures rise to such powerful positions. The reason why we have failed for thousands of years to conquer these archetypal rulers permanently is because for thousands of years we have been fighting the symptoms of an illness and not the root cause. For every corrupt government that falls at the hands of a revolutionary oppressed people, two more will rise in its place every time because the root cause of a corrupt government does not exist in the individual leading that government. It exists within the psyche of every individual because an unaware host to a deadly parasite will do anything to avoid accepting his own incapacity for freedom. And after countless attempts, you would imagine that people would realize that a physical retaliation may not be the solution. Yet here we are, thousands of years later with technology that can clone DNA, vehicles that can break the sound barrier and probe the depths of space, and science that can overcome almost any sickness. Yet we still fail to take notice to the importance of thoughts and consciousness. This is the very definition of insanity. And every single one of us is responsible for this psychic epidemic because we're killing the messenger and paying no attention to the message. And the skeptics will sit there and say, consciousness, archetypes, astrology? No, no, no. We, we create things with our hands, not our minds. Archetypes aren't physical. They can't influence me. But when you think of the fact that we're only conscious of this small little fraction of our behavior, what we don't realize is that Entire countries, entire civilizations that think they're free and independent but are unconsciously too afraid to be free and independent, they will beg to be governed. And if they can't do it themselves, who do you think will consciously or unconsciously take that responsibility? It usually ends up being that strong, masculine, animus archetypal figure. When we think we're in danger, we're not looking for our mother to nurture us. We want our father to protect us. And right on cue with the age of fear, this age of catastrophe, the age of this parasite, we see masculine domination. You see, we all have demons, so to speak. We all have inner demons in our lives, but we expect to see devilish monsters or dark apparitions when you think of a demon, kind of like what you'd see in the cinema. But our demons are really the people in our everyday lives, the people that we argue with the people that we envy or hate, uh, the ones we physically or emotionally harm in some way, shape, or form. And it's not because we envy or hate qualities in these specific people as much as we hate the fact that they remind us of ourselves. They reflect qualities about ourselves that we wish we had more of or that we wish we didn't have at all. We need chaos in our lives. We crave destruction. We beg for catastrophe. Because if we don't have these things to act as a form of exorcism or a catalyst for us, we start to notice these things in ourselves, and that's what we don't want. You see, we can deal with wars. We can deal with terrorism. We can deal with stock market collapse and economic collapse. We can deal with these things. But once we start to notice this chaos within ourselves, that's what we're really afraid of. We'll take a million September 11ths over one moment of true insight towards our self-hate. Evolution does not come about gradually. It happens in spurts and fits, and comes about due to a tremendous need for the organism to survive. We are now at a point in history where we will choose. We will choose to become sovereign or remain dependent, to face our true self or continue fighting a ghost, to become well or allow this disease to grow, to live, or to die. The choice is yours.